Lift it up, lift it up. Say with me, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is a better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you believe that, turn around, shake at least three people's hand, tell them I'm authorized to bless you. I'm Abraham's seed, so receive it now in Jesus' name. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm Abraham's seed. Whose seed are you? I'm Abraham's seed. That means that I have the blessing in my life and on my life. Amen. I refuse, I refuse to be denied. Hunch names, I refuse to be denied. All right. Now, tonight I want to share on something that's very important to the heart of God. And it's an absolute necessity for the body of Christ. Sometimes the world gets ahead of us in things that God has said for us to do, and they get the benefits that are already ours. So we don't want that to happen. This is a necessity. Say this is a necessity. Tonight I want to talk about a law. And this law is one that you're very well familiar with, but we just got to put it into practice. And it's the law of honor. Say the law of honor. H-O-N-O-R. Now, you know the Bible spells it another way. H-O-N-O-U-R. Oh, look at those teachers over there. Educators. <laughs> yes, the law of honor. Let me hear you say it, the law of honor. <laughs> look at your neighbor and say, I said the law of honor. Did you get that now? All right, all right. Say, I have it, say, I have it. Look at somebody else say, I have it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's roll with it. To honor means to, to make heavy. It means to weight down or to carry right or weight. To honor means to make heavy. It means to weight down or overload. It means to carry weight. In other words, that's not... You know, this is carrying something on your hand, in your hands, okay? You honor God when you allow his word to carry so much weight in your life that nothing and no one can sway you away from the word of God. We honor God when we allow God's word to carry so much weight in our lives that nothing and no one can sway us away from what? From the word. Did you get that? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 15. <clears throat> you know, we have been using that word loosely. But we need to understand the importance and the significance of that word in our lives. Matthew chapter 15. When you get that, say, I have it. All right, somebody else coming. Chapter 15, and let's look at verse 8. This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart. Is far from me. Did you get that? This people, it's even back in his day, he's talking about the children of Israel. This people draw nigh unto me with their what? Mouth. And honor me with their what? Lips. But their heart is far from me. The Amplified says it this way These people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts, <clears throat> excuse me, hold off and are far away from me. God said, the people were saying one thing, but, but they were doing another. <clears throat> you know, like people say, I love you, I love you, I love you. 
Turn around and stab you in the back. <laughs> honor comes from your heart. Say honor. honor. Comes from what? Honor comes from your heart. Mere lip service does not honor God. A lot of people, you know, they say a lot of stuff in a lot of places and a lot of circles. Like when you're in certain circles, when you talk religiously. I love the Lord, Carol. I love the Lord. Man, I know I love the Lord. I love the Lord. But when push comes to share, when you have to show up with the proof, it's not there. God is honored when your decisions and actions are solely based on his word. When what? Your decisions and actions. Not just your decisions. We can decide to do something, but never what? Do it. But God is honored when your decisions and your actions are based solely on his word. You cannot make scripture heavy in your life if you do not read your Bible and meditate on that word. In other words, it really has no impact on you. You're making a lot of noise, but you ain't going nowhere. That's, that's how we say it in the streets, you know. You're making a lot of noise, but you ain't going nowhere. His word has to have first place in what? Final authority. God loves his people. Say, God loves his people. There's a, a phrase that is in, the, in the, the saint's circle that says this way. The word of God is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. What is it? The word of God is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. But how does it do it? When you're allowed to have first place and final authority. When you honor him. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be what? Added unto you. That's when God's word is heavy in your life. Say, God's word is heavy in my life. Now, ignorance of the word prevents you from honoring God. When you don't know the word, you don't know what to do. So ignorance should not be an excuse for the child of God when you have your B-I-B-L-E. That's why the Bible says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have what? Eternal life. But they are they which what? Huh? Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have what? Life. Come on. I'll go back and find that scripture for you again. But he's trying to tell you. You're reading the word, but you're not understanding what the word is saying. See, because the word that you're reading is what produces his life in us. He says, such the scriptures. For in him, you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. That's what the scripture says. He said, the word says what? The, the word that you're reading is what's testifying of me. He's talking about himself. Who does the word declare? Him. In him there is life. So we've got to understand that. From Genesis to Revelation, it's about him. In him we live. In him we move and have our what? Where, where is it? In him. In him. Who is the him? Christ. Amen. So ignorance of the word prevents you from what? Honoring God. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be ignorant, brother. That might be a sister next to you. You could say, did you? <laughs> God is our father. And the first commandment with promise is to honor your father and your what? Mother. What is it? To honor your father and your mother. Let's look at it in Ephesians chapter 6 so you can see this. I ain't never read that. 
Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> when you get that side, you got it? Ephesians chapter 6, and let's look at verses 1 and what? Oh, look at somebody. Go ahead on. All right. Verse 1 says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is what? Now look what it says. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Honor your father and your mother, which is what? The first promise with what? With promise. First commandment with what? With promise. Now, see, he's trying to keep us from being destroyed before we ever get a chance to live. There are people now who are not living to, living to get 30, not living to get 25. Some don't even get to be 18. And that ought not to be so. He said, with long life will I satisfy you and show you what? And yet we got these young people, I mean, that they, don't, they don't understand life. As parents, we have the responsibility of training them up. Once they get to know you and Papa, the next person they need to know is God. And you train him while he's in your lap and not on your heart. Let me turn over here. You train him while he's in your lap and not on your heart. He's on your heart when he's in that street. But he's in your lap when he can't get there. You got to crawl before you what? So you have to train him early. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should grow. And when he gets old, he will not what? But you got to train him. Train him with what? With the word. Let him know. The first person he needs to know that's significant in that family is G-O-D, God. God. He has to learn how to reverence God. And back in the day, the older people said, boy, don't run in church. You want to walk in, I run, you know. Just, ain't nothing they're just going down to the front seat. Don't run in church, boy. They were trying to produce in us a reverence for the house of God. In actuality, if we reverence the house, we reverence the man of the house, who is God. But nowadays, well, he's just, he's just a child. No, he said, train him up. You train the child. You let him know that's, that this is not how you act here. You don't want him to get to the president, if, you know, and he's trying to run over and act up. No, them people, were, they, they do him badly, you know. So don't let him be done badly in that natural situation because you didn't train him in a what? A spiritual situation. So we got to get it. Ah, uh, okay, Lord. All right. So it says, children, obey your what? Parents. That didn't say parent. Parents. Now, that's a little on the side here, but I got to say it because you need to know it. Just because dad ain't there, he, that doesn't mean he doesn't need to respect daddy. Because there'll come a time when you'll need daddy because you can't do nothing with him if you're female. I'm telling you, you're going to need somebody to give you a helping hand. Amen. And if you start a relationship right, maybe it didn't go right when you first got married, but I mean, first got together, whatever it was. But you, you'll invest in him. Let him know this is your seed. Who's it? It's your seed. And the Bible says, your seed shall be delivered, and greater be the peace of your children if you teach them the word of God. Now, I know it's, I know it's different, but I'm talking about that's what it's telling you. If you teach them what? The Word of God, things will be different. Amen. He got to know somebody is bigger than you because sometimes, you know, little fellas now, they get to the point that they think that mama can't hold them no more. They can't handle me. And they be strong-arming you. But if the man that produced that rascal still somewhere around, he grab him, and it's going to be different. Come on now, I'm telling you, it's going to be different. Amen. Who is my daddy? What you say? <laughs> the older people used to say, I brought you in this world. Now, that's what they used to say now. You know, that's what they used to say. That was their expression. I brought you in this world, and I will thank y'all for helping me pass out there. <laughs> okay. Now, we don't want to be, have to, we don't have to, won't, won't have to do that. But, I mean, they were trying to make sure that they understood that when the parents speak, the child should be what? Listening. 
I, let me say that again. When the parents speak, the child ought to be what? Listening. Now, let me throw this on the curve, too. Parents should never be debating about a child and his or her discipline in front of the child. You don't talk outside. And they say, you stay right there, boy. Girl, you stay right there. We'll be right back. And y'all go back to the night. Like coach night. You going to get him? I'm going to get him. Oh, you know, I ain't never going Somebody need to get him now because we don't get him now. <laughs> Somebody. And y'all come out there. All right. Come on up here. Whoever got the right to get him, you know, who's going to do it? Get him. The other side said, you better not move. You better not. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a team. How many people did it take to get the job? Two. So what does that mean? Both of y'all are going to be necessary. That's right. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Your parents' words should be heavier to you than the words of other people as a child. Your teacher's words should not be heavier to you than your parents' words. Your pastor's words should not be heavier to you than your parents' words. Back in the day, they look at you. Lord, that look had so much to it. Don't frown, mama, don't frown, because I know what you're frowning for. You seeing the pain you're going to put on me before. <laughs> you know, there's a time when God is perturbed with us. He's disturbed about us. That's why the Bible says it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands. Of who? Don't make God be disappointed in you. Because he loves us so much. Amen, Jesus. Now, since your words, since your parents' words should be heavier uh, to you than the words of other people, the same should be with God, your Father. When you hear God's word, it should have an even greater impact on you, even over your parents. Because he's their parent. And he is not a grandfather. He's still a father. Jesus, okay. When you allow God's word to carry weight in your life, your prayers and your declarations will carry weight with him. <clears throat> Turn the name side. I know you got that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Just because you're praying doesn't mean God is listening to you or that God is going to do what you say. God is a God of relationships. That's why we are told to call him what? Father. Father has an indication of what? Relationship. Intimacy. He's our father. And he says, because he is our father, he doesn't want us to want. Here it is. It said, thou shalt not what? Because he maketh you to lie down what? So he puts you in a place where he knows that you're going to be well taken care of. Okay. Now, as an example, when God's word carries more weight with you than your bills, you will tie. I didn't say don't pay your bills. Now, we read this, we, we quote this scripture where the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. But when God's on the back burner, you take care of everything else and then see how much you got left for God. You ain't seeking first. Amen. Amen. Now, we ain't taking up no offering right now. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> See, you can be self-deceived yes. to believe that you're doing something right. If nobody ever corrects you or help you to make the adjustment, you'll keep, continue to go that way and thank God is just an evil father. Well, if he, if he did what he said he would do, then I wouldn't be in this hole I'm in. No, no. He said, his word will not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which he pleased and prosper in the thing whereunto he sent it. He sent it to us. Yes, but we got to do us part. Amen. Take any of us got to do us part. Yes, I know that's not good grammar, but that's good news. Us got to do us part. Yes, 
Punch neighbor says, us got to do us part. And us going to do us part too. Hey, neighbor, you got to do your part. I know you got to do your part. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's our responsibility to say it's my responsibility. Now, there is no honoring, uh, no honor in obeying God when it is convenient. When you got a lot of overflow, then you're going to be good to God. Uh-uh, that doesn't work with God. When you're in tough times, you have to make tough decisions. And your decision should always be God first. Didn't he say, seek ye what? Anytime I try to get into heaven, you're already saved. He's talking about to operate according to the kingdom of God and the way it functions. If God gave us a plan and it does not work, he has lied. And the Bible didn't say that God wouldn't lie. He says it cannot lie. He says the word will not return to him what? Void. That means empty-handed, not having done what he said it would do. And he tells you, he said, put me in remembrance of my word, for I hasten my word what? To perform. In other words, I get in a hurry to do what I've said that I'm going to do for you. God doesn't operate on man's time. He's not on your clock, not on my clock. But he never fails. Never fails you. Say, God never fails me. And he's not going to start now. Amen. Come on, say, he's not going to start now. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, the other part of that is that uh, not only is that true, but uh, God is not honored when you do for him something that doesn't cost you anything. Amen. If you do something that doesn't cost you anything, God is not honored in that. It's going to cost you something. Sometimes it's leading your friend at the house and coming to church. My folk know. You come to Greenville, I don't care. You can come from Hawaii. Some of them come from Hawaii. So you come where you're coming. But now either you're going to go with me to church or you're going to be left here at the house. I love you. And they already, the word is out. You go to T's house on Wednesday and Sunday. You best to get ready to go to church or you're going to be left at the house. Going to have to go visit somebody else. They know. Plus, they know no, no, no smoke. You know, they think you get to the house. That's, uh, I ain't got no sign that says no smoke. But they know. But it's for their good. See, they, know, they already know me. They, they know, they know, they, look, they know me. They tell us, so are you going to T's house, man? You ready? <laughs> You ready? Because they, they know I'm not going to be arguing with them. You ain't going to bring your booze up in there. We're going to socialize in my house. No, we're not going to do this. This is God's house. No, no my house is God's house because I'm God's, I'm God's person. I'm God's man. I honor God, not, not just with my life, but with everything that is a part of my life. You're not going to be riding up and down the street with me with no cigarette in your mouth. That's God's car. You throw that cigarette out. Get you one when you get out, and I'll get you a match. But <laughs> a light or whatever you need, but you're not going to smoke in my vehicle. Amen. Man, I got that. I got some. Well, no, nah, brother, you, you want to walk or you want to ride? If you want to ride, you better put that on the side. <laughs> no, no. See, now, you just have to. See, mo most of the reason the world really don't, don't really believe the church is because the church is sometimes. There's certain things you can do with them. You know, it's all right when other people are around. But when other people around, they're going to try to be man, woman, God. No, don't do that, man. Oh, man, well, man we, did, we did that last night. Oh, no, we don't do that. Now. We, don't, we don't do that. No, we just don't do that because it's, it's, it's for their betterment. You and I, when we got born again, if we had been taught properly, we would have been told that this is God's house. What is this? This is God's house. And only what God has said must go on in this house. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me. 
A lot of people, I love the Lord. But life doesn't say that. Your life has to say exactly what your mouth is saying. I look, please, I'm trying to help you. I know sometimes, you know, you might be still working on something, but okay, keep working on the, in the right direction. I'm coming out of this. I'm, see, I, I, I don't have nothing. I told you, my two older brothers was alcoholics. Both of them. And they didn't grow up like that. Mama didn't allow no drinking in the house. No can't eat none of that stuff in the house. <laughs> y'all know what can't eat is, do you? <laughs> yes, all, but some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because they didn't have enough money to buy no real liquor, they get them some can heat and they cook it. I don't want to give you the prescription. But I'm telling you, but, but you know, you just didn't do that. Not in Mama's house. Mm-mm. Your buddies knew too. Going to Miss Anna's house, boy, y'all better straighten up. And they straighten up. Are God's, is God's word in order in your house? Don't, don't say nothing. Just smile. See? Because again, folks, when they come, they act like your house is what? Their house. And some people tell them, my house is your house. I ain't lying to them. <laughs> my house is not your house. <laughs> uh-uh. This is not your house. So they be putting stuff up when they come over to my house with cigarettes and stuff and all the little funny things, you know, they be putting them out the way and stuff. And they ain't even doing no cussing. They ain't going to be talking about, let's get it on. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You got it on out there and here. You're going to put your hands in the air and act like you really do care. <laughs> you really do love the Lord. <laughs> I ain't coming to visit you. Hey, praise the Lord, I ain't losing a thing. I ain't losing a thing. You just ain't using up my air and my heat and stuff. I ain't eating up all my food. I'm not, not, I'm telling you. See, we have, listen, until you make up your mind, you don't know how many people you're either hurting or helping. Some people are straddle the fence because most of the people they know, that's how they live. If you straddle the fence, you're helping, you're helping other people go in the wrong direction. You don't have to be condemning or judging. Because most people, is it all right, man, that I, I get one? Thank you, brother, for asking, but no. Okay, man, okay, okay. But you, yeah. And then when you see the church people come, you put it out, man, put it out. <laughs> you don't want to put that out. <laughs> I believe I'm hitting on the right place. This is a, this is a good place to hit right here. This <laughs> it looks like some, some people, oh, Lord, mercy, I got to do it. No, you don't have to do that. You let them disrespect God in your house. Bring the girlfriend over and they're going to act like that's a hotel. Not here. Oh, y'all get a little rough now, don't you? <laughs> hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Now, you really cannot honor God without honoring his son. What's his son's name? Turn with me, if you will, to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Can you get this? I have it. Honoring God. What's your neighbor say? You, you got to get this. You got to get this. God wants you to have it. And I do too. All right. In John chapter 5, when you get this, I got it. Look at verse 23. Verse 23 say, that all men should honor the what? Are you there? That all men should honor who? All right. Even as they honor what? So is that, should you be honored them differently? No. He that honored not the son, honored not what? The father, which had what? Sent me. So what is he telling us? There should be no difference. And you know, I know that that's something that we as ministers have to do a little more teaching on. Because most people still have not really understood, uh, you know, they're one. They're not 21. They're what? They're one. Remember Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay? So uh, some people don't know, do I pray to God or do I pray to Jesus? No, Jesus said, when you pray, say what? Our Father, which art in what? Hallowed be thy what? Thy kingdom what? Thy will be what? All right. Now, 
Let me share a little something because this is a part of honoring God, okay? This deal with finances. The first fruit offering is a substance that brings honor to God. The first fruit offering is a substance that brings honor to God. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. We're talking about what? Honor. It's the law of what? Honor. In Proverbs chapter 3, and let's look down at verse 9. Check your neighbor. Let me see. Don't be faking that. Don't be faking. Verse 9 said, are you there? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the what? The Lord. Do what? Honor the Lord with thy what? And with the first fruits of what? All thine increase. Many churches and many, many, many Christians don't even know, know that this even exists. But it's in the book, so you have no excuse. What does he say do? Honor the Lord with thy what? With thy substance. And with the first fruits of what? All thine increase. Tell your neighbor, you got that now? Now, the, the, the difference between the tithe and the first fruit is that the tithe is always a tenth, regardless of its conditions. When you say you tithe, it means that you've given 10% of what you already have. Tithe is not 15%, it's what? 10%. Say the tithe is 10%. All right. So again now, while the first fruit is always what? The first one of the best fruit. Of the what? Best fruit. Turn to Leviticus chapter 27. You don't just honor God with lifting up your hands now. <laughs> Tell neighbor, you don't just honor God with lifting up your hands. <laughs> See some people, lifting up your hands. Jumping on your feet. <laughs> Leviticus. When you get to Leviticus chapter 27, say, I have, I have it. Two people got it. I want you to see this. How to honor God. Have to know. Have to be taught. Leviticus chapter 27, beginning at verse 24. When you get that, say, I got it again. Look what it says. In the year of the Jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought even to him to whom the possessions of the land did belong. And all thy estimations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Twenty grabbers shall be the shekel. Only the firstling of the beast, which would be the Lord's what? Firstling. No man shall what? Sanctify it. No man shall do what? Sanctify it. Come on, no man shall do what? Sanctify it. Say sanctify it like it mean it. Whether it be ox or sheep, who did you say it belonged to? Who did you say it belonged to? See, now this was back in their day when they were given, they didn't have uh, money the same way we have it. But a part of their income would be animals, get paid, sometimes be meat. All right? So what does he say? Look at it again. Read that last verse. One, two, ready to read. Verse, come on, why? Read, read, read. Only the what? Firstling. Say firstling. Of the what? Beast. Which should be what? Which should be what? The Lord's what? Firstling. See, this is where you count. Uh, most of you say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the Lord. No. The Lord's, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The Lord's, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, what are you doing? You're putting him first. Oh, look at y'all. What are you doing? You're learning how to put him what? First. God says he wants to be what? First. He will not, he will not be in the, in the crew now. God wants to be what? First. And we have to make him what? First. You know, for a long time, it was very puzzling, and it's still a puzzle to a lot of people. They see Sunday as the seventh day. Number seven. If you look at your calendars, it tells you what day of the week it is. What day is it? The first. What is the seventh day of the week? Saturday. 
So what are we supposed to do with the first day of the week? Worship God. What is he going to do? Take care of the rest of the six days that you have. But if you don't give him what? First. See, you see, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You're not, you're not understanding. He's telling him he wants to be what? First. So he set your calendar up that way. Give it to me and I'll take care of all the rest. Amen. Your other six days should be happy, should be glorious, victorious, Amen. because you've given God what? The first fruit of your week. Amen. That's how you honor him. He's not going to make you do it. It's love. Love is what compels you to do for God what God says. When you really love him, that's no problem. It's a problem to do anything for anybody you don't love. I Man, talk to the street needle. I'm, listen, it's a problem to do anything for anybody you don't love. If you love them, there's nothing too good for them. Y'all look at me the wrong way, looking <laughs> straight up in the air. When you love a person, everybody else comes behind that. Where did he come? Behind. That's why God, did, he says it in his word. That's how he desires for himself to be in your relationship. Seek ye first, not just the kingdom of God. He's talking about him, his kingdom, him. Seek him first. Let him have first place and final authority, and he'll line up everything else in your life. He just got to be first. God's not running no competition. 